So hello friends, this is Rupesh and you're watching CVNet's video series on C++17 and this is about STD visit. So we have this function available in C++17 and it is quite useful. It is tightly coupled with variant. So if you are heavily using variant in your program, then you might want to use this visit because it will help you ease out your calling. So variant, we have variant and this can handle many types right at one time because this is just considered union if you have not watched my previous video. So this is a union. It can have integer or string or let's say character or maybe float and list is like unlimited. Okay. So we have user defined and all that. So the idea is variant object, whatever object you will create can hold all these data types, but at a time it will hold only one. So let's say if it is holding string data type in that case, you want to call some function. Maybe let's say you just want to call a print function, whatever the object it is holding, it should get printed on the console. So that is the simplest job. But the point is you always have to check what is the currently type this variant is holding because depending on type, you will try to call that particular overloaded function. What I mean is let's say you have a print function and this print will take all these data types, right? So you will have to have, let's say 10 data types are there. You will have to overload 10 different functions. So first is taking integer and then so on like that. But the problem is to call them, you have to first know the type, what this variant data type is actually holding right now. So this visit is actually here to solve that problem that if and else, if and else will go away. You just call this callable function without even thinking about the type. So this is the goal here. Just be with me. It is going to be fun. So let me just directly take you to the program here. We have these uh, four, I mean, three functions and we have vector of variant. So this is going to take either integer, double or a string. So I am creating a vector. First, it will hold one and then double value. And then it is going to hold a string. So I'm taking these three different data types and we'll just loop over it. So first element is going to have this integer, right? Now see, we are visiting, we are not writing if and else here. That's what we are trying to get rid of. Okay. So we will send this callable function to the visit that, okay, call this function with this parameter. And this element is nothing but the variant. You know that, right? Like how it works. Now this F U N C is getting called here. So see, we have these three overloaded functions and we don't have to check the type. We are just calling these functions with the provided argument and it's just working. And without this, you have to check what is the type of this element, what it is actually currently holding. And then only you will call the appropriate function. So that's like a bigger pain. Now this is so easy. And now you might be wondering like why I am passing this auto ref ref here. So this is for actual type deduction, whatever the type of this element is going to be, it is going to deduce the same type and pass it by reference. So that's for that so that we can actually call the correct overloaded function. And now let's talk about how it is actually doing it. So basically it is checking the type of this element at runtime. Yeah, it is doing that for you. You don't have to do it. This is done for you automatically. So to summarize this, we have visit function. This takes at least two parameters. One is callable function. So this can be a Lambda function. I have given the example of Lambda function. You can go for like any callable object. There are many and it takes list of variants. You cannot give any specific data type here, string integer and character and all that stuff will not work here. It has to be variant. Then only it will work. And this visit actually calls this callable function with these parameters, whatever the parameters you give for you and with the correct combinations, because I have shown you a just single parameter. Uh, it can take like n number of parameters with n number of combinations. Just the point is you should have that overloaded function, whatever the parameters you are passing here. Okay. So that combination should be existing and it solves the problem that you ha don't have to write many if and else statement. It will do it for you. I mean, it will do the job exactly what you would have done by using that if and else, if and else, if and else, depending on the type. So with this, I'll see you in the next videos guys. And don't forget to share this with your friends. It will help them and me both.